Travel Network. Now, from the area's leader in live local news, this is WYLN News, the area's number one source of live local news and information in Luzerne, Schuylkill, Carbon, and Columbia counties. WYLN News starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight on WYLN News. I'm Gary Perna. We begin the broadcast tonight with a fatal crash on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. State police say a 30-year-old man died in a two-car vehicle crash on the northeast extension of the Turnpike in Kidder Township. That's in Carbon County. That happened this morning. The victim was driving a Chrysler Sebring when it struck the rear of a tractor trailer in a southbound lane near mile marker 89.3 about 530 this morning. Troopers say the car became lodged under the trailer and the tractor trailer driver was transported to the hospital with chest pains. Police say the right southbound lane was closed to traffic for some time. The left lane was slow moving this morning in Carbon County. Five people were arrested on drug warrants Monday in Tamaqua. 54-year-old John Bumpy Filler of Tamaqua was arrested on two drug cases. He was taken to jail after failing to post $50,000 bail for both cases. Police also arrested 24-year-old Carly Jell Fairchild, 45-year-old Troy Fairchild Sr., 26-year-old Joseph Kalua, and 20-year-old Haley Bone. Officers used an undercover informant to make controlled purchases of heroin from Fuller at 33 North Railroad Street at 11.20 that morning. A search warrant was put into place for the property where cash, drugs, and paraphernalia were seized from the home. In addition, the task force and the attorney general agents took two Lee Heighton residents into custody stemming from a May methamphetamine sale in Tamaqua. Klein Township residents who have not paid their garbage bill could expect to be in front of a judge. Township supervisors voted unanimously Monday night to authorize the township solicitor to start the process of filing civil complaints against anyone who failed to pay their 2018 garbage bill. Six property owners had civil complaints filed against them last year, which will require them to pay the magistrate fees as well. Penalties will be enforced by the township's garbage collection ordinance there in Schuylkill County. The public had a chance last night to give input on a new park and ride in Butler Township. WYLN's Julie Stefanowicz was at the meeting and has more. Shortly after the Butler Township Supervisors meeting began last night at the community center, PennDOT and a project manager from Riley Associates gave a presentation on a proposed $1.8 million, 114 space park and ride along Route 309 near the Old Turnpike Road. The public then had the chance to voice their concerns and ask questions about the location. Many in attendance live just feet away from the proposed site and are concerned about crime, lighting, and water runoff onto their properties. Are you familiar with any water drainage problems in the development right next to that wetland area that's already having water drainage problems from the wetlands and from that empty property? I'm just not aware. I am, because I live right there. And Mr. Calabrese knows 20 years I've been battling with it. Mr. Kisselweather and Mr. Altmore all know the problems I've dealt with. I have tens of thousands of dollars in my yard to try to keep it dry from water running off from where your proposed site is. Township solicitor Donald Karpovich questioned why another location that was deemed to be contaminated cannot be cleaned up with the help of DEP. We spoke with Paul Minicello of Riley Associates who gave last night's presentation. Basically, uh, you know, we talked about the, the uh, scope of work of the uh, park and ride project, uh, where it's going to be located, uh, what it's going to be comprised of, and uh, basically try to explain that uh, you know, this, the stormwater would be controlled, the lighting would be controlled, and it should have very minimal, if any, impact on the residents. We scoured the area, as I said, and, and looked for uh, uh, several possible sites. And uh, uh, again, we originally selected a different site, which seemed to be the more practical, but uh, uh, the, like I said, the contamination uh, on the site uh, kind of ruled that out. The supervisors also agreed that choosing another location would be best for the township. They asked officials with PennDOT to consider public comments and possibly schedule another meeting. The next steps is, uh, you know, PennDOT's going to take these public comments and evaluate them. Um, they may choose a different 
go back and look at a different site. Uh, they, you know, and I really can't speak for PennDOT. I need to uh, discuss it with them first and uh, see what they want to do next. In Butler Township, for WYLN News, I'm Julie Stefanovich. Thanks, Julie. The Hazleton Area Board of Education held a special meeting last night to discuss more options regarding their ever-growing enrollment. WYLN's Julia Wiegand was there and has the details. The Hazleton Area School Board has been working with an architect group for months to find solutions for their ever-growing student population throughout the district. Student enrollment was growing, growing into bounds that uh, were running out of space. So we have authorized a consultant to work out the plan for us. This, uh, this is a proposed plan of a three-phase project that would last over 10 years. The district received a three-phase proposal last night at a special meeting, which entailed filling in four elementary middle school pools for classroom space, purchasing an off-site location to utilize, as well as renovating and adding on to the high school building. We would be expanding classroom space on the elementary and then the secondary level. And what we're going to do is, it's, it's, it's just the beginning, it's the start, the proposed plan. So we'll continue to work on that plan and modify it the best we can so we can make it acceptable to uh, the whole entire board and also keep uh, in mind, be cognizant of the taxpayer's dollars. Phase one involves converting four existing elementary middle school pools to classrooms at McAdoo Clares, Heights Terrace, Freeland, and Valley. This would add a total of 18 classrooms to inventory, cost estimating at just under $10 million. Phase two involves purchasing the Gans Complex to relocate five pre-K classrooms and three early intervention from Hazel Township, as well as warehouse operations from CTC, allowing CTC to be the comprehensive high school. This would also provide seven special education classrooms and is estimated to cost under $7 million, excluding the purchase of the building. Phase three involves adding on to and renovating the high school, cost estimating at under $25 million. These additions and renovations would bring the high school's existing capacity of 1,793 at 120% utilization to a completed capacity of 2,356 at 10% utilization. Hazel's and Area School Board's next regular monthly meeting will be held September 27th at 6 p.m. Reporting from Hazel Township for WYLN News, I'm Julia Wiegand. Another meeting tonight to talk about. For the next 10 years, a tax assessment plan will be in effect. That plan approves a Luzerne County Council at last night's meeting in Hanover Township. Now, commercial development was also discussed at North Point, that is home to the Chewy.com. That abatement plant will be in for 10 years. Three new police vehicles were purchased for the Hazleton Police Department thanks to the state's LSA fund. Two 2018 model Ford SUVs and a 2018 Ford Interceptor were added to the city's fleet late last week at City Hall. The vehicles replace Hazleton's older model SUVs, which the city will now use in the parking enforcement and code departments. The former cars will now be utilized, and one former car was utilized as an unmarked grant police car. We were able to obtain three vehicles. Same schematic, the black and whites, more visibility, more traditional technology inside. We can track the vehicles, CAD systems all in there, so we have the computer-aided dispatch. They can run their plates, they can silent dispatch, all kinds of things that can be done so that we can really police better. Other funding from the grant will go towards officer training in 21st century police, uh, such as violent crime redu uh, reductions and group violence interventions. A expert, which is Dr. Richard Reyes, he is from Science and Innovation. He's out of John Jay College, a professor who has over 35 years of law enforcement. You know, he is very well versed in ComStat, in what we call Cooper's Curve, 21st century policing, all types of strategic initiatives. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that I've, you know, put in place here, but what I want him to be able to do is to teach the officers the why, mm -hmm. the how, the who, you know, so that we can get involved more into a group violence intervention, which will be the next component of the next grant we write. Officer training will begin within the next month. Over the past three years, the city relied on a combination of funding that includes donation, grants, state liquid fuel funds, federal community development money, and drug seizure funds to purchase roughly 20 vehicles between the city police, fire, and other departments in the city. 
Coming up on WYLN News, first responders and residents in our area remember those that were lost on September 11, 2001. Plus, a bookstore opens up a pop-up store. We'll explain. But first, let's take a look at our seven-day forecast here in WYLN. Thursday and Friday, we're going to see some more storms in our area. The high in the low 70s. Saturday and Sunday, though, not looking too bad for the Italian Festival at Community Park. And to start off the week, not too bad. We're keeping an eye, though, on Hurricane Florence to our south. We'll be right back. Each of us has a different idea of what makes an adventure. Go anywhere and do anything in a Jeep from All-American Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram during Jeep Adventure Days. Lease a new Jeep Compass Latitude 4x4 for just $169 a month. Or lease a new Jeep Cherokee Latitude Plus 4x4 for just $189 a month. And get 0% financing on select models. Whatever adventure you enjoy, we can get you there in a Jeep at All-American Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Or online at allamericanjeep.net. It's okay that everybody ignores me when I drive. It's fine, because I get a safe driving bonus check every six months I'm accident free. Because I don't use my cell phone when I'm driving, even though my family does and leaves me all alone. Here's something else. I don't share it with mom. Right, mom? I have a brand new putter you don't even know about. It's awesome. Safe driving bonus checks only from Allstate. Switching to Allstate is worth it. Visit your local Allstate agent, the McNeilis Agency in Hazleton at 1092 North Church Street, or in hometown in the hometown village square. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric Mr. Slim ductless heating and cooling system. Mr. Slim systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money saving technology can save you 25 to 50% on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and train comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Tuesday night, Hazleton held its September 11th memorial service. WYLN News intern Mike Murphy has more on the celebration. Firefighters and members of law enforcement gathered at St. Gabriel's Church in Hazleton Tuesday night to honor the victims and families of September 11th. About 100 people and law enforcement were on hand for the ceremony. The observance has been held every year since the 2001 terrorist attacks. Hazleton Fire Chief Donald Leshko was determined to make sure the attacks of 9-11 stay in everyone's mind. And we were here today to make sure no one ever forgets. And we will never, never forget. Hazleton Police Chief Jerry Speziel showed his gratitude. Law enforcement officers, firefighters, emergency medical The ceremony included a special bell tolling by former West Hazleton Chief Robert Ward and firefighter guest speaker Stephen Malinchuk, showing appreciation for Hazleton law enforcement, praising them for a job well done. Others found light in the darkness. The touching ceremony ended with a 21-gun salute and a playing of taps on the trumpet. In Hazleton, for WYLN News, I'm Mike Murphy. Thanks, Mike. Jim Thorpe residents had the opportunity to see members of Governor Tom Wolf's cabinet today. It's the 29th annual cabinet in your community event that took place at the Mock Chunk Opera House on West Broadway this afternoon. Some notable members taking part include secretaries of the Department of Labor and Industry, Community and Economic Development, and the Secretary of Conservation and Natural Resources. More events are scheduled with the governor. Three more Th just three months after a tornado touched down in Wilkes-Barre Township and heavily damaged the Barnes & Noble, the bookseller will be opening a temporary pop-up store at the East End Center Thursday. Barnes & Noble made the announcement via their Facebook page. They are leasing a space for six months to occupy the former 30,000 square foot Sears outlet. 
work is ongoing at the Barnes & Noble at the Arena Hub Plaza. It is unknown when the bookstore will open its main facility again in the Arena Hub. Coming up on Hazleton's News Choice in Community and You, we kick off Wellness Wednesdays with Lehigh Valley Health Network. Plus, do you have documents to shred? We'll tell you where you can do that for free. But first, let's take a look at your winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played everyone. Stay with us. sanctuary in Philadelphia. Matt Cartwright supports sanctuary cities and voted to give illegals amnesty. Cartwright's part of the radical left, like Philadelphia's mayor, who celebrates. A sanctuary city. A five-year-old girl. She will never be the same. Matt Cartwright is a disgrace. I'm John Shrin, and I approve this message. Chura's Auto Sales has been serving the area with quality vehicles since 1954. Chura's Auto Sales is known as your friendly dealer and now in their fourth generation and voted the best used car dealer by the readers of Standard Speaker Choice Awards. John Chura would like to thank everyone that voted for his business. When you need a quality pre-owned vehicle, choose from a large selection at Chura's 570-454-7229. fast, consistent internet speeds. TV your way. And reliable phone service. All from the one provider who also lives here. Service Electric Cable Vision. Connect with us. Wednesdays here on Community and You. Thanks to our friends at the Lehigh Valley Health Network for partnering with us to bring you some great wellness tips and information right here every Wednesday on Community and You. And today I'm very pleased to have with me Dr. Jonathan Perry, who uh, is fairly new to our area here. So before we get into our topic of the day, uh, Dr. Perry, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you are new to the area. Uh, from what I understand, not born and raised here in Pennsylvania. Oh, correct. Uh, originally from Oklahoma, uh, but uh, after growing up there, went into the military for a little while, and then uh, after doing that, uh, actually did settle in the Pennsylvania area, went to Penn State Hershey College of Medicine, so we are, um, <laughs> and also uh, did my uh, residency, my surgical training at Leah Valley in Allentown. Uh, miss those people. So I feel a little bit like a transplant, if yeah, you will. Just a little bit. Yeah. But you've spent a, a good uh, chunk of your professional career, almost all your professional career, right here in Pennsylvania, uh, Penn State, and then here at Lehigh Valley Health Network. So uh, we're great to have you up here in the greater Hazleton area sharing your expertise. And you are a physician and general surgeon. So uh, for somebody out there, exactly what do you do on a daily basis? Okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, sometimes people call a general surgeon like a belly surgeon, uh, which means you know you, you focus on things, small bowel, colon, mm -hmm. uh, disease process, maybe bowel obstructions, diverticulitis, hernias, especially we do a lot of hernias. Um, uh, but, you know, we do a lumps and bumps in other parts of the bodies uh, and also, um, you know, thyroid, mm -hmm. parathyroid, a little bit of necks, that kind of stuff. So we're a little bit of everywhere, so that's where the general <laughs> comes into play. So a little bit of everything kind of thrown in the mix there and, and you guys are, are able. So uh, our, our topic we want to kind of talk a little bit about today, today is something that a lot of us kind of deal with, but it could be causing a lot of problems for us, and that's reflex disease. And some people think, like, uh, when you're eating something maybe, I know for me, any type of spicy food, uh, I'll taste it for days. That could really be a big problem uh, for, for some people. So there are two different types uh, really that we're going to talk about and it's kind of treating it medically and surgically. And sometimes the medically part works, maybe if it's on a, a prescription medication or taking some over-the-counter stuff, but uh, there is a different part to that as well. So 
with reflex, what are some things, that, first of all, what are some of the signs and symptoms that we really should not just be living with it, that we should get it looked at? Okay. Well, uh, reflex, obviously, you, you felt that burning. If you've had it, you felt the burning in your stomach, and sometimes it can kind of raise up into your chest. Some people even think it feels a little bit like a heart attack. Um, it can be worse after heavy meals, of course. Uh, fatty meals, um, caffeine, chocolate, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, also at night when you lay down, you can feel that kind of bothering you. Sometimes it, like, they call it a brackish taste in the mouth. So these are all things that suggest stuff's going in the wrong direction. And this could be be, could be treated by you know some antacids, medication, stuff like that. But if you are, are experiencing it a lot uh, more often than you should, you really should talk to your doctor about it because there could be something something else happening. Correct. Uh, in fact, when uh, somebody first mentions this to the doctor, a lot of times they uh, prescribe a, an antacid medication. It's f uh, frequently known as a PPI, a proton pump inhibitor. Those terms might be thrown out. Um, they're very good medications. They can help treat the symptoms. But you know, obviously, sometimes it warrants further investigation because there is cer certain other things happening, not just the, the acid that was kind of coming up into your in chest, but you actually can have bile reflux. And, and um, you know, not to scare anybody, but uh, you know, that can there's some thought that that's relating to uh, mm -hmm. esophageal cancer. One of the least common cancers we have, but you know, we, we were concerned about it because it can be very hard to treat when you do find out about it. Um, I know uh, when you are looking at medical versus uh, surgical, some people are like, oh great, you know, I have to go for surgery, blah, blah, blah. But it could be something as simple as, as almost getting like a tube to kind of just see where what things are going on. So kind of more of an exploratory to see if there is an issue where it may not be a full-blown surgical operation. Yeah, one of the first steps in evaluating this disease process uh, is if, again, if you're have on those PPIs and you're not getting relief, or uh, you know you have to take massive doses and it's just been a problem, then sometimes you can get endoscopy done. That's where a scope's put down through the mouth and looks at everything. Mm -hmm. We're especially looking at, again at the esophagus and, and maybe for some other signs of symptoms of uh, ulcer uh, or inflammation in the stomach. Um, but you know that kind of gives us a sense of how bad the reflux is, and sometimes it identifies other problems like hiatal hernia, which is meaning that your stomach sometimes gets a little pulled up into your chest and that it mm -hmm. makes the, the reflex issue worse as well. So there, there's a lot to this. Um, again, we could probably spend a whole hour just going back and forth uh, with this. So if, if somebody, uh, again, there maybe they get it three or four times a week, you know, is, is that a sign that maybe we should call our doctor and, and get in and get looked at? Uh, of course, because you know we don't want you. None of us want you to be out there suffering. We want you to get treatment. We want you to get the best treatment possible. Yeah. All right. So uh, if you have further questions, you want to maybe do a little bit of research, uh, learn a little bit more about Dr. Perry, you can head over to lvhn.org. Uh, the Health Network's website is a great tool to find a lot of information about uh, the physicians, about the different services provided right here in our Greater Hazleton area that you don't have to go far for, uh, or to learn more uh, just in general. And also. Also, if you're thinking, hmm, it's time to make an appointment, or you know what, I think I'm having some problems, I better call, um, contact your provider, or you can contact Lehigh Valley Health Network at 501-4LVH, and they can get you an appointment and get in to see maybe Dr. Perry or one of his colleagues here in the Health Network. Thanks for joining us here on Wellness Wednesdays. We'll catch you next time here on Community New on WYLN. Northeast Pennsylvania, scenic beauty, close-knit communities. We're neighbors helping neighbors. Lehigh Valley Health Network is bringing you leading edge cancer treatment that's close to home, robotic surgery for quicker recoveries, world-class heart care and access to top specialists, all from Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton and our 15 community locations. Neighbors caring for greater Hazleton and beyond. Lehigh Valley Health Network. All Care Home Care, providing quality in home care since 1986. Call and see how their team of licensed physical therapists, skilled nurses, speech, and occupational therapists can provide you with exceptional service in the comfort of your own home. They also offer dietitian, home health aid, and medical social worker services. You have a choice in your health care. For safe, friendly, qualified care, call All Care Home Care today and let their team begin taking care of you and your loved ones. 
Stop in at Two Italian Guys Pizzeria for the best pizza in town. Serving a large variety of pizza, stromboli, and so much more. Open till 3 a.m. Take out or eat in. Delivery available. Call 570-459-2783. Stop in and get everything you need to make your garden colorful and bright. Check out our incredible low prices only at Van Hoeken Greenhouses, Retail Garden Center, Lofty Road, McAdoo. After almost shutting down for good because of decreased funds, Candy's Place and 44 announced last month that they would be staying open. The organization has been helping cancer patients and their loved ones since 1998. Due to overwhelming calls of support and offers to help, Candy's Place begin to restructuring and organizing with the intent of keeping the doors open for the coming years. The organization is expected to get new management. Employees and volunteers should find out who is taking over by the end of the week. Residents of the 119th Legislative District have a option to shred their unwanted documents. State Representative Jerry Mullery is sponsoring a free shredding event Saturday from 10 a.m. till noon at the Crestwood High School. Documents are shredded on site and all remains will be recycled. Residents are encouraged to bring their untethered documents like bank statements, medical records, cancel checks, and insurance records to be shredded. Plastics such as the binding, binders and checkbook covers along with the metal spirals of notebooks will not be accepted. Business documents will also not be accepted. Stay with us. A look at today's weather is next here in WYLN and happy anniversary to my wife. We'll see you later. One of the greatest fairs on the East Coast, the 163rd Bloomsburg Fair, September 21st through the 29th, with farm and garden exhibits, agriculture displays, Cinderella carriage rides, demolition derbies, and tractor and truck pooling. Take a ride on the carousel or one of the many amusement rides. For a scenic ride, jump on the Sky Ride. The grandstand boasts the lineup of entertainment you don't want to miss. Order your tickets online or at the grandstand office. Always a wide variety of attractions and food vendors. Come and enjoy a day at the Bloomsburg Fair. Visit us on the web at www.bloomsburgfair.com or call 570-784-4949. Appliances are right over there, and this is part of our furniture department. Okay, but I'm looking for a mattress. Well, you've come to the right place. Grand Central is Northeast Pennsylvania's number one Sealy mattress dealer. We have Sealy mattress sets from only $199 and Stearns and Foster Queen sets from only $45 per month. We also have interest refinancing up to 60 months. And remember, delivery and takeaway are absolutely free. So we don't have to do anything? Not if you buy your Sealy mattress at Grand Central. It looks like I did find the right place to buy a Sealy mattress. Grand Central and Hazleton, the right place to buy a Sealy mattress. You've seen university advertising. A student like me pitching you the same old ideas. But I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna tell you what you can do with a Penn State degree. You can help anyone. Go anywhere. Create! And with 20 campuses to choose from, you'll always feel at home. Look, Penn State is amazing, but your best years are just beginning. Come find out! For yourself.
You're watching Monterey City's Choice for news, weather, and live local sports. WYLN, we're your local network.